The European Union and Japan have just signed a widespread trade deal that will eliminate nearly all tariffs. Both sides are heralding the deal, which covers a third of the global economy and more than 600 million people. I'm joined now by Euronews's Brian Carter in Brussels. Brian, what's the significance of this deal? It's hugely significant. We're talking about the biggest free trade deal in history. As you said, 600 million consumers, one third of the world economy. This took, this took four years to negotiate. It was started in 2013. Then the negotiations uh, stalled for a while. And then thanks in part to Donald Trump and his protectionist measures, this really gave an incentive to uh, the EU and to other countries to find, new to find new venues for their market, to find new trade agreements. In the words of Cecilia Malmström, the uh, Commissioner for Trade here in Brussels, she said, I quote, we are sending a message to other countries about the importance of free and fair trade and of shaping globalization. Now, what are the main advantages of this deal? Now, for Europe, uh, it will increase their exports of goods and services. Uh, it will remove tariffs on key products such as cheese, uh, wine and pork. And will also give equal access for European companies to the procurement markets in Japanese cities. And for Japan, the main advantage advantage is for its car industry. At the moment, every single Japanese car that is imported in Europe is taxed at 10%. Now, that tax will be gradually removed over time. But not everybody is very happy with this deal. In Europe, uh, trade unions are unhappy with this deal, saying that uh, the free trade agreement does not incorporate, I quote, effective labor enforcement provisions. They also point to the fact that Japan still hasn't, hasn't ratified some of the key conventions, conventions of the International Labor Organization. And for Japan, in Japan, the agricultural sector is not really happy with this deal either. They're afraid that uh, Japanese markets will be flooded with cheap uh, European products. And this is a sector that's already suffered a lot. In the 60s, you had about 12 million farmers. In Japan, today, there are only 2 million.